everyone. Jason Sherman here. In today's episode of Zero to CEO, I have with me founder and CEO of Interchange Capital, Ami Baum. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Jason. Happy to be here. Cool, man. And we're going to talk about how it's not if, but when you will exit your business. And I'm assuming this is people that have worked very hard to uh, either a lifestyle business or a startup or maybe brick and mortar franchise or whatnot. And, you know, there's not a lot of success stories out there, right? There's mostly failures. So the lucky few that have been able to claw their way to the top, we're going to talk about how you can exit properly. So let's talk about if you did make your way to the top where you can exit, what is, in your in your opinion, what is a successful exit or transition to something else or just retiring? How does that work? Yeah, yeah I, I, there, you know, there's four keys to a successful exit. Um, obviously, um, they're, they're going to seem to be obvious. Uh, you want to maximize the value for all your lifetime of work. Uh, you want to get the largest amount that you can. A part that people forget about is uh, you have a tax bill. So you want to mitigate the taxes. And then the other part, which tends to keep people from doing it, is they have to make sure that from the proceeds, they can cash flow their life. Uh, a lot of people don't recognize that uh, that unless they're a serial entrepreneur, and then they just keep rolling them over. Uh, and then the last part is really staying in control in the process. So it's maximum value, mitigate taxes, uh, make sure you can cash flow your life, and then you staying in control. Mitigating taxes. I mean, <laughs> everybody would love to know how to mitigate taxes because that's one of the harder ones. I've read something about maybe putting it into real estate or nonprofit, make make a nonprofit and have a charity and just um, donate a lot of it. Or what what are some of the ways that you can yeah, mitigate? There's a, there's a number of different ways depending upon the situation, depending upon how the entity is structured. But ultimately, the key to be able to mitigate taxes is to have time, and and I think that's part of the biggest issue around exit planning and the transition or succession is most people don't put any attention to it until at the very end. And by that time, you're not going to have the ability to build out tax mitigation strategies. They just take time you know, for it. So there's a number of different ones based upon how your the entity structure, as I mentioned, and it's really something that once you recognize, and, and I try to let everybody know this, you know, exit planning is really good business planning. So you really, from the moment you start, whether wherever you're starting, you should begin to run your business as if you're going to sell it, make it attractive to a ultimate buyer. And in that process, you can find ways and work on ways to uh, mitigate the tax bill. And there's a number of different, as you mentioned, there's some charitable ways, there's some ways in using different types of retirement plans, different structures in terms of uh, stock ownership and entity structures, et cetera. And the retirement plan goes into the, the fourth point of being able to live off of that uh, at some point. So, you know, if you sell a business for say a million bucks, I mean, with inflation nowadays and you know, the cost of goods and everything, that's not going to really maybe not last you the rest of your life. So how, how can you stretch that out? Is there a way, I mean, let's well, say you, let's say you can't sell your business for that much. Maybe you, someone's only offering you a million bucks. How do you stretch it out? Yeah, I think that's part of the process. So there's a process. We talked about the outcome, but what's the process? The process is first you have to identify and quantify. So you have to take a look at what the value of your business is. You have to take a look at what you're outside of the of the equity in your business, what other assets you have. And then you have to figure out, well, how much do I need as a lump sum after tax so that I can ultimately cash flow my life? And in many cases, there's a gap. And so once you identify the gap, then you can move into the second stage, which is maximize 
and protect where you want to grow your business to be able to take care of that gap. But while you're doing that, you also want to be able to protect because there's all kinds of potential issues. And then lastly, you want to be able to transition and transact. Too often people jump to the transition and transaction phase because that's the most fun. That's where someone's going to write you a check or someone's going to buy you out. But if you haven't done the first work, if you haven't identified and quantified what your bigger future looks like, both on a qualitative basis as well as on a quantitative basis, then you're already putting the cart before the horse. And then once you get that analysis done, where you know where you, when you want to go, who you, how much you're going to need, who is the best option for you, then you work in that uh, maximized and protect area where you're growing, you're making sure that you're increasing your value uh, drivers and eliminating your value detractors. And that's why we say the sooner you recognize that it's not if this is going to happen, it's when, then the sooner you can get started to build a successful exit, which will ultimately take care of those four success criteria. Yeah. And it might mean that you have to stay at the business longer because you mentioned the gap and let's say i let's say i'm 60 years old i wanted to retire at 60 years old but the buyers are only offering me say two million dollars my number was five million dollars that i wanted and i'm just not there but i know that if i keep the business running for another say three years i can maybe earn three million dollars in the business to to make the value worth more or whatever the numbers are to make it work. So maybe that's kind of where that gap you mentioned, it's it's about stretching out the length of the, say it's a family business, right? Say you're running a family business. Say you're running three restaurants and your family owns all three restaurants and, and you want to, you're done, you, you're tired. You want to sell the businesses, right? right. And, a sh- and a couple of chefs have offered you, you know, X amount of dollars for each one, but you got to keep running the restaurants. Is that part of the strategy that you tell your clients is that, hey, you might have to keep running these restaurants for three more years or four more years? Yeah, I mean, it's that's part of it. it but if you, there, there's two types of buyout. So you mentioned the buyout where the chef. So you have an internal management buyout or a buyout from family members. That's an internal sale. And then you've got the external sale where somebody, a strategic partner comes in and writes you a check. Most people want the strategic partner because then they're out. But that is the one that happens the least often. Most frequent exits happen from a management buyout or a family situation. So what you can do is you can begin to start to develop different types of incentive compensation plans and be there. The difference is you're not there to run the business. You're there to oversee, to make sure that that internal management company can actually, your internal management can actually do it or the family members can do it. And as the business grows, they're able to take some of that profit and be able to buy you out. So that's why I say it takes time, it takes time. to do all of this. Because it almost um, sounds like you're becoming, you know, at some point, uh, for lack of a better word, a consultant, you're, you're a supervisor, you're kind of like, okay, look, you guys are kind of taking over, but I'm still here making sure it's all being done right, but I'm not going to be doing the day to day Uh, getting my hands dirty. So uh, yes, that's that's correct. The biggest problem with most people is in their businesses is they are the center and the hub of the wheel. And and we've got to get them out of the business. (laughs) It's hard hard, hard, though. When somebody, when someone's been running a company for 10 to 20 years, how do you you know how people are stubborn, especially when their life is the business. So let's talk Mm -hmm. for a second about how do you help a business owner transition, not just out of the business, but into a whole new life because think about it because they're they're they're, they're gonna have 12 hours a day to do nothing now right except play shuffleboard sit on a boat on a beach somewhere they're gonna get bored it's the biggest problem that there's there are the things (laughs) that we have to do when we talk about exit planning there is the quantitative and there's the qualitative it's really about sitting down with this business owner and saying what's your bigger future look like and if and for you're right for many people there is no bigger future other than the business so if that's the case then we help them build a self-managing company so that they can still be involved 
and they can do the stuff that they love to do, but not all the stuff that they think they have to do. Let's talk about that for a second. Yes. Self, self-managing self company. So give me an example of what that would look like for a guy who sold his pizza shop at 60 years old. Well, he would probably, you know, if it's a pizza shop, it may be more challenging, but it's still the essence of it, of a self-managing company is you have to determine as the owner what it is that is your unique ability. What is it that you love to do that you're passionate about? And in many cases, when we talk to business owners, it's really being the cheerleader for the company. That's the part that they love the most. And so let them do that and then bring in others or empower the employees to take over other parts of that business for them. So Mm -hmm. the self-managing company is for, and in many cases, that's what I did because I don't, I can't imagine what my life would look like if it wasn't helping entrepreneurs and business owners unlocking the largest financial transaction of their life and doing it successfully. I love doing that. But there's a lot of other things that are in part of that that I can't stand to do. So what I did is I delegated <laughs> that out to other members of my firm and what when I delegated it to them, I made sure that it was what they were passionate about. Because the biggest problem with delegation is you delegate it to someone who's not as good as you, that doesn't work. You've got to delegate it to someone who's better than you. So what we try to do, and it's not easy, and a, a lot no, of that's definitely not easy. Owners, I deal with that every day. So that right. is not, that is probably one of the hardest things to do. Right. You've got to get the business owner out of the middle, and for some they're looking forward to their next chapter. And for others, they're really not. But when we start talking to them about this bigger future, whether it's another business, whether it's volunteer, whether it's working, you know, being spending more time with the grandchildren or the family or whatever, there is a next chapter. And that next chapter, if they can attract to that and build something that makes sense for them, then it makes it a lot easier to help build the next generation of the business ownership. So why can't a business owner, let's say a, a, a husband and wife own a chain of clothing stores or they had a startup that was sold to Google or something and they have all this money, but they, they don't really know what to do and, and they're not exactly sure, but they can write out a plan. Why can't they just write out a plan and follow it? What What's the, 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 the value of working with experienced professionals versus just doing it by yourself? Yeah, th- there's too many nuances. So first of all, in order to be effective with money, you have to understand tax, you have to st- understand legal, you have to understand protection, you have to understand investments, you have to understand all of these different banking. There's just too many parts of to be able for a, an individual, unless they've committing their entire life to it. It takes a lot of time. It takes talent. It takes temperament. And in most cases, these business owners don't have that. What they have is their ability to make money and run their business. Right. So it's very important that they put a team around them and they use that team to make sure that that team is building the bigger future that they want, that is addressing the dangers and fears that they want to eliminate. Well, so let's, Let's Go. talk about these so dangers and fears. Like when you say these trigger words to me, uh, entrepreneurs are all fearful of what's next. They're all fearful of a lot of things. And a lot of it comes down to potentially risks, mistakes. So what do you, what have you seen from these business owners? What are like the top two things that you've seen that every single business owner makes this mistake and you're here to tell them, here's how you can fix it? Yeah, the biggest mistake is that they don't plan far enough in advance. We've talked about that before. They just wait until it's too late. When they're tired, they don't have enough energy. They, that's that's the biggest one. The second biggest one is the fact that they think that the number that they're going to get is the number that was presented to them, and they forget about all the taxes that are involved with it. Uh, what we try to do is help our clients recognize it's inevitable. It's going to happen. Let Let's build the plan. The longer you have to be able to build this this transition strategy, the more success you're going to to have with it. 
um, and to prevent the mistakes because mistakes made here with this largest financial transaction of their lives has generational consequences. And we've seen that over and over again. And a lot of times it really comes down to it's the Achilles heel of what made them successful. They're control freaks. Yeah. They want to control everything. That's what made them successful. And yeah. controlling gotta, everything gotta learn to is let go. really going to be the problem in, in this next chapter. Great. This was awesome. I know that uh, you've sold me on it. So when I'm ready to sell my businesses, I'm going to be contacting you at interchangecp.com. Ami Baum, thanks for joining us. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, as always, we will see you in the next episode. Thank you very much.